Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Angel Storm. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are in the holiday season and this is one of the most incredible times of the year and it can also be one of the most stressful times of the year, uh, especially if you are dealing with a narcissist, if you are still not healed from narcissistic abuse and if you are still trying to navigate the family court system as well as everything that goes along with that, right? When you start the family court system, and even when you start the separation from certain narcissists, you can feel as though you are isolated. And in fact, you can actually get isolated socially, uh, and that can cause you to become very trapped in your own emotions and your own thoughts. And so today, I actually want to give you some ideas on how to kind of jumpstart your way of getting out of that environment that you've created internally for yourself. Before I get started with that, I also want to say what I've noticed as a coach is that when you're dealing with narcissistic abuse and you're dealing with the process of trying to develop your life outside of the narcissist, whoever that is for you, maybe it's your blood family, so so a blood relative like a a mom, a dad, an auntie, an uncle, a sibling, whatever it may be. Or maybe for you, that is that you're divorcing somebody or perhaps you're uh, changing careers because you've recognized that your boss is a narcissist or whatever your case is. You can start to feel like because you're dealing with that situation, which may have been building for years, even before you ha had the wherewithal or the boldness to actually deal with that situation, is that every other little thing now feels like another world of weight being put on you. So for example, if you are already in the court process, a family court process with a narcissist, or you are already working through um, establishing your own sense of security, your own sense of self after separating from your blood family, you might, you know, and then your car breaks or, you know, so your boss says something rude to you, or your best friend doesn't understand the process that you're going through and doesn't understand why you can't just get along with everybody. You know, that one comment, that one event, that one happenstance can feel like another blow and another blow. And these could be normal life events. Like I said, your car could just not start one day in the morning or something happens, you know, with your, with your heat or, you know, your air conditioning at your house. And it's like a normal thing. But when you're already dealing with trying to untangle yourself from the system of narcissistic abuse that you either grew up in or have been living in, um, you can really feel like there's just no uh, peace for you. And that's really what I want to address first is that understanding where your feelings are coming from. So the source of these things, which in this case, these are all external events, which means that your feelings, which are an internal uh, and an and intrinsic to you vibration are, are being pulled on because of these extrinsic things. So you need to really identify what are the emotions that each one of these things are are bringing up for you and then go deeper down because if you are already in court maybe for you you're feeling like the car breaking is just one more thing that's not reliable it's one more way that i'm left to deal with everything on my own it's just one more reminder that you know i'm i'm by myself or that nobody helps me or whatever the narrative is around that event for you you need to identify it because you need to start changing the narrative that you're telling yourself about that event if you want to have a different outcome in general. So yes, for that thing specifically, but I'm talking about in general now. Let me just give you an example of what I mean. If your narrative around that event is nothing is reliable, I have to do everything on my own, you are going to send the signals to other people and to other things in in your world, in your external world around you, that I don't want help. I don't need help. I'm not going to accept anybody else's assistance. I need to do everything on my own. And so the people who would be willing to help you in that situation are not going to be drawn to you because you are putting out this rejection 
uh, force field all around you. And so because we don't want that, none of us want to be isolated. None of us want to be alone and left to deal with everything in life by ourselves. And we weren't created to, to do that neither. We need to change the narrative about that situation so that we can come up with a solution on how to deal with, yes, these individual events that are happening, but also our life as a whole and what it will look like once we are untangled from the narcissist. And again, whatever system that looks like for you, if it's your blood family, if it's a marriage, if it's a career path, whatever it is for you. So number one, identify the overwhelming feeling that you are having most in life. And then try to separate that out to see if there are events that you are attributing to that feeling that maybe are just happenstance, right? Like the car breaking, that's not because of the narcissist. That's not because of something else happening. That's just part of life, the, the air conditioning going out or the heat going out in the house or that something needing to be repaired. That's just part of life. Now, for the people who are going to say, if the narcissist had paid the car bill, if the narcissist had done this type of thing, um, I'm going to tell you right now that that type of mindset is is allowing the narcissist so much control over your life. It's You need to go watch one of my other videos that talk about mindset shifts around the way that you are viewing the situation with the narcissist because that mindset is going to continuously get you disappointment. Okay, so moving on. Let's talk about what to do now. So now we have identified what our overwhelming feeling is. We're identifying the issues that are happening in our external world that are allowing that feeling to grow and build. Now what we want to do is we want to allow ourselves to get into a different um, a different mood. And I often tell people, if you want to change your mind, you first have to change your mood because your feelings are so strong. I could be telling you all of the things, right? You're beautiful. You're wonderful. You're more than an overcomer. You're you're created to be more than a conqueror. You're going to get through this. Things are not going to be this hard all of the time and so forth. And none of those things are going to impact you. You can't embrace those things because my words are in direct opposition to your feelings. So you could be saying, yes, I know all of that stuff is true. And you're nodding your head at me. And yet your feelings haven't changed. Your mood hasn't shifted. So give yourself permission to shift your mood before finding a solution. One of the things that will inhibit you from coming up with a solution that's actually going to address your problem, but also following through on the impl implementation of that solution is trying to rush this process and thinking that changing my mood is just an unnecessary step. And that couldn't be further from the truth. You need to shift your mood in order to come up with a solution that is going to be the best fit for your specific solution. So how do you sh change your mood if you're feeling so overwhelmed? You're feeling like I just, you know, can't deal with anything. Um, getting outside in nature is so important. That's for a bunch of different reasons. Specifically, if you can get outside, like when the sun is first coming up, if you can put your feet on the ground and, uh, and just stand in the grass, stand on the sand, do something outside where you are getting reconnected. There's actually, um, a lot of science that is super interesting. If you're interested in this kind of thing, like I am about the frequency that the earth is putting out. You know, this earth was specifically created to be the perfect environment for us to thrive in. And so everything that we need has already been provided around us. It's just about learning how to use that, absorb it for ourselves on a daily basis. We often get so used to being like, oh yeah, I drive past that park on my way home from work, or yeah, I see... And that that, you know, place would be a fun place to visit. And it's, it doesn't cost any money, but we never take the time to go do it because we just get so used to seeing it all the time. We can become desensitized to it. And we always think that there's something else that's going to be more important. And so I encourage you to get out of your environment. So even if it's as something as simple as like whatever room you're sitting in and you are not feeling the best in and you are having these toxic ruminating thoughts, you need to get out of that room. That room, because like the earth, you are also putting out your own frequency. Your thoughts 
are powerful and they are actually things. They can change the structure of your brain. And so are your feelings. You know, your emotions, emotion, the word literally means energy and motion. So you are putting out this energy and it is getting absorbed by everything in that room. Get out of that environment and start moving your body so that you can help that energy move. Once you have shifted your mood and you feel like you're in a better headspace, I want you to get a whiteboard, a chalkboard, or even several pieces of paper that you tape together. And I want you to just start brainstorming ideas on how to solve this problem. And the more outrageous the solution, the better, because this is actually activating a, a creative flow inside of your your brain where it's it you are now pressing on your non-conscious mind to bring up to your conscious mind ideas that you have never thought of before. So I, I gave this example the other day in in my coaching that I was doing inside my intensive of let's say you're dealing with a boss that you are really tired of, right? And you're just wondering, are they a narcissist? Is this job just not right for me? Like what's going on here? Think of some solutions about your job, your income, this boss. And so, for example, let's say that's the problem. A brainstorming solution could be moving to Mars, right? I need to get off of this planet so so that I can get so far away from this boss. That might be a terrible idea for a bunch of other reasons. But at this point in time, what we're doing is not trying to come up with a solution, we're simply brainstorming what are potential ways forward for this problem. Because we often get into this mindset that's very limiting as well, which is that we think there's only one solution is to do whatever the boss says or to do whatever the narcissist says, or that I have to keep repeating this cycle that I'm trying so hard to break. When we have a limited mindset, we are only going to see one possible solution. And that solution, by the way, is going to be the one that feels most comfortable for us because at the end of the day, the solution that we choose reflects the state of mind that we're in. So if we feel very limited, if we feel very powerless, if we feel like there's nothing that we can do to make a difference, we are going to get back into the same patterns of behavior that we were making before. In other words, I'm making the same kinds of choices, the same kind of decisions that got me into this situation in the first place because that's what I believe. That's how I feel. It's a reflection of how I, I believe about myself versus if I think there is a different solution, if I think there is a different possibility for my future, if I think that that's something that I haven't experienced before personally, but I've seen other people do it is a possibility for me. I'm going to make choices that are in line with that belief meaning I know I can set boundaries. I know I can use my voice. I know that I have more than one option in this situation. And brainstorming is, is allowing you to see, here's a million other possibilities. Here's a million other ways to go forward. And so be as creative as you possibly can be during the brainstorming time. What I also want you to understand is that Typically, when you are feeling very overwhelmed, not only have you activated the fight, flight, freeze, or fawn mode, which has been heavily overactive in your body already, you are feeling such extreme pressure to come up with a solution and to do it now and to make a decision now. And that type of pressure will actually have you creating the patterns of behavior that you've done in the past, which make it so difficult for you to break these types of cycles. So I just want to remind you that you do not need to make a decision right this second. Very few things in life need to be made, have a decision made right now. Now, there, the better that you get at knowing yourself, knowing your destiny and knowing who you are and listening to your intuition, you will get better at making decisions and you'll be able to make them much faster. During this phase of your healing, I just encourage you to honor yourself and the position that you're in right now and to not try to wish it away or do something to kind of hurry up that process. That is always a situation where it's just going to add stress to you unnecessarily. And it's also not going to help you learn about how to pay attention to when you feel something is right for you versus if you feel something is not right for you. So after you have done your brainstorming 
and you've got your your board or your your pieces of paper with all of your possibilities listed on it i again want you to go do something else maybe for you it's dancing maybe for you it's turning on music and baking cookies or just doing something that is freeing and fun for you maybe you want to just go sit in the the bathtub and you want to just turn on music or you want to listen to uh, a non-stressful podcast Whatever it is that you want to do, I want you to go do that. Because again, this is not a process that we're going to rush. We are going to connect with what we're doing. We are going to connect with how these decisions feel for us. When you're ready to sit down and actually see what decision is the best one for you, um, we can probably we can probably already cut out some of them that have to do with like moving to Mars or, you know moving to Thailand or something like that, unless that's really what you want to do. If you want to move to Thailand, then maybe now is the perfect opportunity for you to do that. For the rest of you who are like, yeah, I was just, you know, doing the exercise and I was getting my brain to think of super creative ideas, then we can go ahead and cross those ones right off the list. Now for the rest of them, how do we know if that's a good decision for us or, or not? And what I want you to do is with each solution that you have brainstormed up, I want you to close your eyes. I want you to think of that solution. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to envision walking down that path. You know, if I if I follow through and I make this decision, so let's say one of the options is doing nothing and repeating the same cycle again. That can be one of your options. I want you to go down that road and visualize what will that what will that look like? What will it feel like? What will it sound like to me if I continue to go down this path? What will, in a year from now, what will my life look like? In a month from now, what will my life look like? In five years from now, what will my life look like? And I want you to come back to neutral, come back to waking life. I want you to do the same for the second solution and the same for the third solution. I want you to walk that thing all the way down. What will it feel like as you're having that brave conversation with somebody that you might need to have a conversation around boundaries. You might need to learn how to enforce them better for yourself. You might need to admit to yourself that you've been making commitments that you haven't, uh, you haven't, you haven't kept for yourself. And by the way, not only is that causing brain damage, every time you lie to yourself and tell yourself you're going to do something and then you don't do it, you are, you're actually causing brain damage to yourself. You're also setting yourself up to create cycles of failure. So if you can look at and and see like, oh yeah, I started college, but I didn't finish. Or I started that job, but I didn't finish. Or I started that business and I didn't finish. It's a cycle of failure and it's caused because you have lied to yourself too many times. And so if you want to break that, you have to start seeing what are the small things that I can start keeping, uh, keeping promises to myself on today, this week, consistently over time before I try to add anything else. You know, there's a great book. Um, I can't remember the name of it, I think it was called like 10 small habits for success or something like this. And it's by um, Mark Gretchel. And he talks about how, you know, the promise he made to himself like 30 years ago or something was, I'm going to floss my teeth every day. It's something that small where you start making a promise like that, where you don't renege on it and you continue to move forward with it. You can start adding in more complicated promises to yourself and that's really how you start having true success in your life. You start becoming the person that you actually want to be and success flows out of that. So coming back to the brainstorming exercise, I want you to walk down every single path. Some of these paths are going to feel very difficult, but you're going to like the outcome of what they will ultimately bring you, where they will ultimately take you. And for those ones, I want you to understand that you're more than capable of doing all of that. It's about believing in yourself that you can overcome that obstacle. And that, in fact, that obstacle is there to serve you. It's there to help you recognize who you actually are and pull out that potential from you and make it manifested in the natural realm. The truth is that power was within you, has been within you all along. It's just waited. It's just been waiting for something to kind of shake you awake and for you to start utilizing your true identity. Okay, now what does all of this have to do with the holiday season? And how can this help you handle the narcissist over the holiday season? 
number one, yes, everything I've just talked about, that's a life skill. You need to know how to do this, whether you're dealing with a narcissist or not, because at some point in your life, you are going to have to make a hard choice. You are going to have to make hard decisions. And it's really important that you know the process on regulating your own system. So how do I regulate my own emotions? How do I get my body to not dictate to me what I do in life and what I think about in life and who I hang out with and who I make connections with and what my limitations are, right? I need to know how to do all of that. And all of that comes from learning how to regulate your own body because if if your body is dictating to you how to think and what to think, then your mind is a slave to your body. Your brain is a slave to your body. Every time you, your body feels uncomfortable, you you move, you get out of that situation and you have a dysregulated nervous system, it's going to constantly have you creating cycles and patterns of abuse that are leading you to failure in your life. So everything I've already talked about is, a, is really a life skill. When it comes to the time of um holidays with a narcissist you know everything can feel overwhelming a lot of times for people even if they don't deal with narcissists around the holidays simply because there's just a lot of stuff going on there's a lot of activities that you're trying to get everything in you're trying to manage the relationship dynamics and you're trying to figure out you know what you know what day are we going where and how do i plan for all of this and i get it there's a lot of stuff going on but ultimately, you need to learn how to serve yourself. How do I receive and how do I become the best version of myself so that I can then give that away, even in this time of all the hustle and bustle for the holiday season? And so what I want to encourage you to do this holiday season is that you learn how to implement the things that I talked about in this video and really be present with people in the moment right? Because if you're not making memories, if your memory of every Christmas time is an argument or a, a crazy, you know, family feud or something like that, you have the opportunity to break that cycle right now. So I want you to actually, if that's your situation, go through these steps that I gave you today and really think about what would your life look like? What would your family dynamic look like? What would your future generations holiday time look like if you were to be the one to break the cycle this season. And so I want you to know you have many options. You have so many options and you are the creator of your own life. So you get to choose which option is right for you, is right for your family. And also understand that there are seasons. So whatever season of life you're in today doesn't mean that you're going to stay in that situation forever. Give yourself grace. You don't need to show up every single holiday season to all of the things. Pick the things that are going to feed you the most and do those things. You are created in the image of God to create in the image of God. So get out there, start creating the life of your dreams, even in the midst of the hustle and bustle, even in the midst of dealing with a narcissist. And remember, these are all opportunities to actually show you who you truly are. These are opportunities for you to prune your character and to really get clear about who you are, what you will tolerate, what you will not tolerate, and to start keeping some promises to yourself. If you are really ready to not have another year like 2023, and maybe for you, you're starting to realize 2023 was a repeat of 2022 for you, then I want you to text the word DETOX to 512-677-9322 and apply to join my Narcissistic Detox Intensive, where I guarantee you will break the trauma bond, be able to rebuild your finances, reconnected to your identity, and really move forward in your purpose because there is life after narcissism. Merry Christmas from myself and from all of the people that helped me at the Manifold Mind. We truly hope that you remember the reason for this season and that no matter what situation you're facing, you really take time to celebrate the birth of Jesus and that that means there is always an answer for every problem that you are facing. And with that, I will see you in the next video.